Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day two of the Women's Forum Global Meeting. One common vision unites us today, a world where women are equal actors and decision makers across all spheres, be it in politics, business, science, and in our society. My name is Natalie Reut, and I have the great pleasure to be your MC today. I am based in Luxembourg. And the mission of the Women's Forum Global Meeting is to remove all structural barriers to equality. We want to ensure that women of all generations, ethnic, cultural and social backgrounds can rise as key drivers for a more just and inclusive world. The second day of the Women's Forum Global Meeting is dedicated to inclusive STEM and uh, IA TAC. STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as you all know, and AI for artificial intelligence. And in our sessions today, we will focus on education. How can we make sure girls and women aren't missing from STEM training? We will discuss innovation and diversity. How can we inspire and advance the diverse perspectives in STEM? We will zoom in on STEM skills and social mobility. And last but not least, we will have a closer look at how the power of technology and especially AI can support inclusion. These and more questions will be discussed today. For the welcome speech, I hand over to Audrey Chakov, the well-known French economist and political advisor, Jacques Attali, says about Audrey, that she is remarkably determined and convincing. Together, they created the Institute for Positive Economy with the goal to assist governments, communities, and companies in their positive transformation. Very involved in the course of women, advisor to the G20. Audrey even published a book last year that addresses, among other things, the urgent need to reinvest in girls' education in the world to face of the economic crisis. Since April this year, she is the managing director of the Women's Forum. Audrey Chakov is determined to work for the development of a sustainable and inclusive economy geared towards the future generations. And we love her for that. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Audrey Chakov. The floor is yours. Thank you very, very much for being here with us today, Natalie. It's a pleasure to have you hosting our day on tech. And today, as you said, we are focusing particularly on the importance for women to acquire STEM skills and on promoting inclusive and responsible AI for all. The underrepresentation of women in tech is really one of the most crucial challenges our economies and societies are currently facing. Indeed, it's 85% of the jobs of 2030 that do not exist yet. But we already know that this profession will profoundly depend on technology and tech. Nevertheless, women and girls are facing enormous barriers breaking into STEM fields. And the data say it all. Worldwide, we only have 20% of engineers uh, that are women. In France, it's 30, so it's not much better. We know that the majority of women who manage um, to start their careers in tech move to other sectors due to persistent barriers, and the wage gap is, is one of them. However, the Women's Forum data clearly demonstrates that this situation is not aligned with uh, what the public wants. Because according to our G20 barometer that we released uh, two weeks ago, more than 80% of the population is convinced that better access of women to STEM jobs would have a positive impact both on the economy and on the society and would make technology applications and AI tools more efficient. So at the Women's Forum, along with our partners, we are committed to creating a more inclusive world where women and men are equally represented in the tech sectors and have fair opportunities to flourish in the jobs of, of the future. Through our Daring Circles, um, the Daring Circle Women for STEM, and also through our Daring Circle Women for AI, 
our think tanks, we are deeply committed to making sure that this change happens. So on one hand, the Women for STEM Daring Circle aims to increase the representation and leadership of women with STEM skills at all stages of the pipeline, as we like to say, from school to the boardroom. And on the other hand, the Women for AI Daring Circle advocates for making the design and implementation of AI truly inclusive and beneficial to all. So my question is, in 2021, can we really accept that only 25% of employees in the AI field are women? The answer is no. So a parad paradigm uh, shift is therefore necessary now more than ever. And we are working to make sure that AI becomes a powerful tool conceived and developed without gender bias. And then we must go even further to ensure that AI is used to promote gender equality. So in this framework, I'm proud to announce today the publication of our toolkit on inclusive AI. It's really a unique instrument that has imagined, been imagined for organizations that are willing to use AI ethically and inclusively. And this toolkit also offers um, practical guidance, I would say, on what inclusive AI uh, means, how to advocate for it internally, how to achieve it. And I invite you to discover the toolkit on our platform, on the Women's, uh, on the women's Forum platform, and draw inspiration from uh, its insights. Because if used properly, uh, AI can help us correct and should help us correct the discrimination that plagues our society and build a better world of equal opportunities for everyone. It's really, in my opinion, um, a, re a revolutionary power that we have in our hands to build the best transformation possible. So thank you all, and especially a big thanks to um, our partners, and uh, especially our partners who are dedicated all year long uh, to work with us on the Women for STEM and Women for AI Daring Circle. I'm thinking about Microsoft as the leading partner, but also BCG and PwC. Without uh, them, nothing of this could have been possible. So enjoy the sessions. Thank you again, Nathalie, and back to you. Yeah. Thank you, Audrey. And let's start working on this paradigm shift. The theme of this year's global meeting is not here and now, but it is, and I love the twist, her and now, uniting purpose and power for equality. And this first uh, session of our STEM Day, Inclusive STEM and Tech for Good, is dedicated to innovation through diversity. And we build this world together, men and women, hand in hand around the globe. And therefore, joining us uh, from the United Arab Emirates is His Excellency Omar Sultan Al-Ulama, -Al Minister of State for Artificial Intelligence, Digital Economy and Remote Work Applications. His responsibilities include enhancing the government's performance levels by investing in the latest technologies and tools of artificial intelligence and applying them in various sectors. He's also chairman of the Dubai Chamber of Digital Economy. And he will have a fire starter conversation with Professor Arij al Vabino. She's a scientist, investor and entrepreneur joining us from Saudi Arabia. She is the founder and the director of uh, Al-Faisal University's AI Center and a research affiliate at MIT. Prior to that, she served as executive director of IP enablement at uh, the Saudi Authority of IP, leading the National Network of Technology and Innovation Centers. She held many leadership positions in various research institutions specializing on research and development. Arij is passionate about public engagement in scientific research and education and highly dedicated to promoting the understanding and the involvement of youth in STEM. And without further ado, I hand the floor over to His Excellency Omar Sultan Al. Olama and Professor Arish Alvabil, and they will tell us how they envision 
inflaming, enhancing innovation through diversity. Assalamu alaikum. Professor, it's an absolute pleasure being with you um, here today. Thank you very much um, for inviting me. And I must say that um, it feels um, good being the minority for once in an event that focuses on women. I think we need to have this uh, sensation more often because most events that we look at focus mostly on the male voice. But uh, as we see the world change right now, the female voice is as important and as equal as the male voice in fields, specifically the fields of the future, like artificial intelligence, like you know the digital economy and STEM in general. Um, I'd like to just open with a few remarks, if you'll allow me, um, just on the importance of women in STEM. I know that this topic is one that is uh, discussed quite often, but we need to also acknowledge what are the contributions of women in tech specifically and in science more broadly. Uh, and here, the first thing I'd like to say is, I think the whole notion of programming and the whole notion of developing software was first started by a woman, uh, Ada Lovelace, who was really a pioneer before her times in the, in the early 19th, uh, 19th century, where she uh, wrote the first line of code. And today, because of that pioneering step that a woman took, Every single man on earth and every single person on earth is able to uh, take uh, the, the world forward in a digital first world that we're seeing right now and create the solutions that we were able to, cre to create. The second thing is, what are the contributions of women in science? I think that every single time a woman has gi was given a chance to be um, uh, you know, considered an equal to a man in science, the contributions have been massive. And we see that from people like for example, Marie Curie, who reinvented a science that we knew and discovered new notions of radioactivity and other sciences as well. So every single time a woman is enabled, every single time a woman is empowered, every single time she is treated as an equal to a man, the impact is exponential and history is changed. Uh, what I think we need to focus on moving forward is the fact that there needs to be certain restrictions that might exist in certain parts of the world that should uh, be actually removed. We need to look at cultural restrictions, social restrictions on women going in tech and developing these technologies, and also the role of government to ensure that there's a reduction in biases, and there's also more engagement and involvement of women in developing these systems. Because as women get more and more involved, we will see better results for the future that we want to live in. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Your Excellency. It's an honor to take part in the uh, Women's Forum, the general meeting, and building on what you have highlighted um, uh, in regards to the contributions of women in STEM, perhaps we can reflect on what organizations can do to inspire, retain, and advance diverse perspectives uh, in STEM. So if we look at organizations across industries today face a common barrier to achieving their goals, or remaining competitive in their industries, and that's mainly talent, despite that it has already been established that increased gender diversity within organizations, particularly at leadership levels, um, is directly linked through multiple studies to increase productivity, innovation, profitability, and market value for these organizations. So lacking the necessary STEM skills in general, the broad STEM skills or specific emerging technologies, AI as an example, many organizations, we find them ramping up their hiring while looking to diversify their talent sources. Demand for STEM uh, only looks to continue to grow in recent reports, if we look at AI as an example, AI intelligent, uh, AI specialist is among uh, the top emerging jobs yeah. in 
less and leading economies with hiring growth for that role, increasing more than 70%, uh, a trend we've been seeing in the past five years. Now, despite the surging demand for uh, STEM skills in general or specific emerging technology skills or scientific skills, one talent pool that could help these organizations achieve their ambitions has remained largely untapped, and that is women and the topic and the focus of uh, the forum that we are in today. What we see for the path forward are, uh, is threefold, basically at the individual level, the community level, organization level. So perhaps at the individual level, um, it has been established that developing capacity, providing education in the STEM skills is essential. And organizations would also need to um, uh, basically uh, focus on removing the ambiguity surrounding what it means for these graduates to work in the STEM fields and showcase the numerous opportunities in the space beyond just the scientific engineering or technical roles and women across these um, wide range of academic and professional backgrounds uh, would have the ability to excel in these fields by contributing in different ways. Well, what is interesting to see is that for every field we have different uh, applied domains in which women's, women would be engaged in. An example again in the scope of AI careers in artificial intelligence would encompass many different roles beyond the technical such as product management, user experience, data data science, AI ethics, just to name a few. The second uh, element to consider in the path forward would be building and showcasing archetypes of women in STEM, where it's critical to have visible female scientists or STEM leaders within business and society. So doing so not only provides the women working in these STEM fields with clear examples of how to rise professionally, but it would also help us to deconstruct negative cultural stereotypes about underrepresented groups um, not belonging to STEM. And also essential in this scope is mentoring, where mentor future women in STEM would um, contribute to uh, supporting women advance in their careers and perhaps address any challenges they might face. And what we have seen is the organic growth of technical societies, professional societies that are often aligned with these uh, annual gatherings or meetings for in STEM context. Examples from our local or regional context would be uh, mentoring for female entrepreneurs in the regional Arab net forums or the technical societies of IEEE and ACM affinity groups in which charter chapters um, exist uh, globally and they meet annually for their specific field in which they address issues locally, however, connect to the global community. And in addition to that, we also have affinity groups that are homegrown or uh, have evolved to address in local uh, regions to address specific issues such as women in business networks. If we look at locally, Scylla Network for Women in Business or specific technical fields such as the Beyond Foundation for data scientists, females in the field, and how they connect them across academia, government, and industry. Now, the third uh, element as we move forward is going beyond formal programs at the organizational level, where we aim to create a culture of diversity and inclusion at all levels, particularly the leadership level. And interestingly, the general sentiment is that the programs uh, or the groups that are created within organizations are often not sufficient on their own to make the STEM or AI space more equitable or viable for women, um, it would need to be augmented with constantly searching for and addressing uh, uh, or, and eliminating biases in the context of learning or in the context of the workplace, while at the same time considering merit-based hiring or positioning uh, or positions that would place well-qualified uh, women, well-deserving women in the roles that become available 
uh, in the scope of organizational opportunities uh, that historically been underrepresented by female employees, where such a culture can be the foundation of these businesses uh, that could advance, uh, that could uh, provide the space for women to contribute effectively to advance uh, the organization's goal. Last but not least, our data-based organizational diversity goals, which can be powerful tools for these organizations to address unequal representation in STEM, because it can be difficult to change a problem that is not um, uh, quantified clearly for that organization. And this takes me to our unique Arab context uh, for your excellency, uh, a question uh, looking at the Arab world uh, characteristic in that we do have a high proportion of women graduates in STEM fields. Uh, so my question to your excellency is in what ways do you see the Arab world already benefiting from the diverse perspectives that we have in the context of STEM uh, workplaces? Thank you very much for your insights and thank you for that question. Uh, I think the Arab world is not uh, benefiting enough from the diverse perspectives of women, but we have seen great examples of women coming into the STEM field and taking a leadership position and really making a big difference in the Arab world. And here I'd like to talk firstly about the UAE's space program, our mission to Mars, which was led by a woman who's a computer scientist who was able to, uh, through you know, all odds and great um, challenges like COVID-19, um, take the first Arab Muslim nation to Mars. Uh, that is proof that, as we said before, when women are empowered, when they are trusted with the capabilities necessary, that great things will come out of it. We also uh, are seeing the incredible and monumentous impact that women are having in fields such as food security. Our Minister of Climate Change and um, Environment, who also oversees food security, is a woman and the UAE has continuously improved its ranks in the food security agenda and today is seen as one of the leading countries when it comes to uh, cutting emissions and going towards the um, you know uh, global uh, carbon cap that was agreed on in Glasgow this year. So in general the Arab world has great um, role models for what women can achieve once they are given the ability to thrive in this field. There's another important thing, which is if you think about some of the cultural restrictions that women may have and social restrictions that women may have, the Arab world is perfectly situated to empower women in, in, in sectors like coding, uh, for example, and in software development, where they can balance between some of these restrictions that they might actually uh, instill on themselves. You know, they are working mothers who live in rural areas and do not want to travel for long distances because they want to be close to their families. The type of jobs that can be created, if we empower women with the right capabilities to join these sectors remotely, uh, are going to allow for us to get diverse opinions and to also push this technology forward in a way that is unbiased. Um, we know that, you know, um, there's a certain uh, um, uh, dependence right now on whether it's foreign talent when it comes to coding and development of software, or even if it's local talent, it's mostly male talent. Um, trying to inject women into this field is going to definitely have incredible long-term positive implications on the sector and on the region as well. Absolutely. This takes me to a question building on that uh, approach or that strategy. And um, that would be how can the private sector or universities um, work with governments to uh, inspire, retain and advance these per diverse perspectives in STEM? Uh, what I would say is I think the, the government's role, first and foremost, is to push both the private sector and academia to do more because what we realize today is the status quo is not enough. Um, trying to say that these programs that inherently were programs that males jump on or maybe today the representation of women is quite low, so women might not be comfortable going into these classes or joining these programs is uh, unfortunately inefficient. We need to have certain policies that push for you know, attracting women to these programs and also changing the program depending on 
what uh, women require to be a part of it, whether it's offering it uh, virtually uh, as a program, whether it's changing the incentives to make it more friendly. Uh, in the UAE, one of the things that um, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, our leadership has pushed for this year specifically, was we want half the coders in the UAE to be women um, in the next three years. And we need to, uh, you know, upskill women at a proportion that we've never done so before, just because we do believe that the biggest unlock for the country is having more women um, uh, lead in, in STEM fields and also specifically on technological fields as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. thank you very much uh, for Thank you very much for sharing uh, your views and for opening uh, this uh, second uh, day with a fire starter session. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned. We will be back in a bit.